Phil? Phil? All I see is a kitchen. Hey! He's alive. Hey, Phil Franco. Good morning. How are you, sir? He's alive. Thank you for coming in. You caught me as I was about to raw dog some, uh, <laughs> some blueberries. You look skinny, Phil DeFranco. Thank you. All it took was uh, disease. <laughs> Have you lost weight? 30 pounds. Three zero? Actually, wait, since you last saw me, 20 pounds, but yeah. And how much of that was on purpose and how much of that was um, your body revolting? All of it's on purpose. Uh, it was it was my body revolted because of how I was eating, so I had to change how I was eating. I had an amoeba once and I lost about 18 pounds in six or seven days. Where That's a parasite mean? living inside my body that was eating all the food that I was eating. Yeah, I got it in Africa. It was cool. Wait, so, but I have a, I have a question not about Africa. I have a question about New York. And if you okay. know this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question some things. Uh, do you know the dollar amount that you can steal in New York before it becomes a felony? Uh, yeah, I think it's $950. Ooh, close. Yeah, well, either you're right or I'm right. It's $1,000. Okay. Do you know when they made that law? My understanding is that it was fairly recent, like in the last couple of years as part of a uh, um, criminal justice reform, but I'm not 100% on that. 1986. It is a year... Wow. Younger than, younger than me. Did not know that. And do you know if you jump over state lines to New Jersey, I don't know if you ever would, <laughs> but if you did, do you know what the, the limit is there? I mean, my assumption would be that it's significantly lower, but I don't know the answer. $200. And then if you got on a flight like Casey Neistat does, but not on one of those cool lay down seats and you went to Texas, what do you think the dollar amount is? Uh, again, if I had to guess, I would say substantially lower. No, everything bigger in Texas, $2,500. Wow, fascinating. But, oh, so here's the thing. When the New York law was set, right, 1986, for inflation, that's around $2,600 now. For New Jersey, the inflation's even crazier. It's 360%, and so it, the number's around $880. And the reason I say this is because, because of inflation, and we're seeing a lot of it now, people are getting charged with felonies for things that, for, for what they would not have been charged uh, like five years ago. Yeah, that's fascinating. So the question I have for you is, do you think that the limit, right, the, the threshold that politicians said that is what equals a felony should rise with inflation? I, I need, to, I would first need to better understand the correlation, if there is any, between having a lower threshold to a higher crime and a higher punishment, does mm -hmm. that actually reduce shoplifting? And if it doesn't, then of course the, the number should be higher. But if having a, a felony would discourage people from shoplifting, then perhaps it should stay lower. Because I know that you're a little bit of a politician and you're not quick to jump to, to conclusions. I'm already prepped for that because uh, according to the National Retail Federation, they're saying that we're seeing more uh, crime happen because of increased thresholds that have happened in a few states. But you have the Pew Charitable Trust saying they examined crime trends in 30 states that raised their felony theft threshold between 2000 and 2012 and found that there was no increase on overall property crime or larceny rates. And I'm going to put Casey on hold for a second because I do want to ask you, where do you think you stand on this? Because personally, I can see it both ways. Politicians said, this is what we feel is the threshold in our state. But as the value of a dollar goes down, so does the threshold. But I could also understand not wanting to raise the threshold because then you could be seen as soft on crime, inviting more of it. And then, of course, there's a debate that if you raise the threshold, there will be fewer felonies and people could actually focus more on violent crimes, which are actually a little bit up. And so with this story, I want to pass the question off to you. If you were in control, do you think that the threshold should raise with inflation? Yes, no, why, why not? Let me know. But wait, Casey. Last thing you want to say. Last thing I want to say is stop calling me at 8.08 in the morning to ask me political questions, Phil DeFranco. Also, you look go. great. Thank you. <laughs> That'll be good. With that said, welcome back to the Philip DeFranco <laughs> Show. Buckle up, hit that like button, and let's just keep this thing rolling. Is that good? Thank you. And then, Will Smith and Ezra Miller who? Because we need to talk about the absolutely insane video that TMZ released this morning showing Mike Tyson just clobbering another guy on a plane. Reportedly, the incident happened last night at 10.30 as the plane was preparing to take off from San Francisco. And I'll give you one guess which airline it was. Yep, JetBlue back in the news. Well, a witness told TMZ that Tyson was initially cool with the man, even taking a selfie with him. Things took a massive downhill turn after that man allegedly began to harass Tyson, with this eventually leading to Tyson turning around from his seat and repeatedly punching this man in the head. From there, Tyson reportedly walks off the plane and in a video that was recorded after you see the man's forehead bloody. With the guy filming this whole situation saying, Boy just got beat up by Mike Tyson. Turn that way. Yeah, he got up. 
trying to ask for an autograph, man. I don't know what happened. Now, I really want to know, there are still a ton of gaps in this messy story, but according to TMZ, eventually we're told Tyson had enough of the guy behind him talking in his ear and told him to chill. When the guy didn't, that's when the witness says Tyson started to throw several punches at the man's face. With it also reporting that sources close to Mike claim the man was extremely intoxicated and would not stop provoking the boxer in his seat. TMZ also giving more details later this afternoon when it quoted a rep for Tyson who referred to the passenger as aggressive, saying he harassed Tyson and adding that the man eventually threw a water bottle at Tyson while he was in his seat. Now it's unclear how bad the guy's injuries are, though TMZ said he got medical attention. The outlet also noting that the man went to police, but as of recording, it's unclear if he plans on or has already pressed charges. And personally, I'm left going, I kinda gotta give Mike Tyson the benefit of the doubt here, especially if that bit about the water bottle is true. Because one, if the other guy made a physical first, game on. But also two, I feel like Mike Tyson later in life has proved to be a very calm individual. And there have been examples, instances, where the, the situation is crazy. And Tyson maintains a cool head, so I feel like something had to have happened. I mean, we're talking about Mike Tyson, where just a few weeks ago, Tyson kept his cool after a man at a comedy show pulled out a gun and cocked it, challenging him to a fight. While people were fleeing and ducking and Tyson has it in him to disarm this man. Tyson just sat there in silence until the man calmed down with Tyson then even hugging him. But, you know, main thing, we've seen the video, we have some information, we kinda just have to wait to see. Right? Because yeah, more information's gonna come out, obviously we're gonna see more statements, things are a little bit murky now, so I kinda wanna hold off my opinion. But yeah, I guess the, the piece of advice I can add to this story, whether you think Mike Tyson was in the right or in the wrong here, is it's never a good idea to drunkenly harass a stranger, but it may be the worst idea to drunkenly harass someone that has been a trained killer for most of their life. You know, rightly or wrongly, you're fucking around and you're gonna find out. But from that, I wanna take a second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Vessi. Vessies are lightweight shoes that are perfect for all seasons because they actually keep your feet warm and dry through the rain, the snow, the mud. They're built for everyday life. Vessi makes 100% waterproof and snowproof sneakers that are incredibly comfortable, breathable, and actually pretty stylish. Personally, I wear both their Cityscape sneakers and the weekend shoe. This morning I was rocking the Chelsea's. And their Diamond Text material is a dual climate knit that keeps you cool in summer and warm in winter, which truly makes this the everyday sneaker, even for the wet season. These shoes are perfect for traveling, easy to pack and ready for any weather, or just running errands to the gym, going to the park with the kids, or even on muddy hikes. And with the weekend shoe, you can just rinse them off or even throw them right in the washing machine. It's just that easy. Be sure to grab some now while they still have your size and you'll definitely be thanking me later. Just go to Vessi.com slash DeFranco right now. And be sure to use code DeFranco at checkout for $25 off. And if you don't, I won't be able to send him to college. That's a lie, that's, not, that's a lie. But fantastic shoes. And then, in absolutely shocking news to pretty much no one except the people that came up with the idea, CNN Plus has been a failure. And we learned as of today, they did not take my offer to take it off of their hands for $13,000 in a waffle maker, and instead decided to just shut down CNN Plus. It's lights out on April 30th. This is a massive embarrassment for the company, a massive waste of money. And I kind of think the, the main thing that we learned from this is even the most dedicated watcher of CNN isn't like, I want more of that. Well, I think that this pretty much would have failed at any time. I really think the only time they could have launched this and maybe had success is right after Trump got elected. Right then, they're a network that's in opposition to the sitting president. I just wonder what their answer to the why question was. Right, whenever you make something, there needs to be the question of why does this exist? And if the answer isn't good enough or there is no answer, that thing is going to die. And then, of course, we need to talk about what's going on in Ukraine. First things first, Ukrainian officials are claiming that in more and more cities are finding mass graves and what are growing signs that Russia is engaged in systemic war crimes. So picking up where we left last time with the Battle of the Donbass and the Siege of Mariupol. With the siege, it was expected that the defenders literally had hours left to live if Russia decided to storm the factory and the bunkers surrounding it. But Putin decided, screw it, announcing today they would starve them out instead of taking what would inevitably be heavy losses. This has led to Ukrainian President Zelensky trying to open talks to release the soldiers and civilians in the Mariupol pocket. Though Russia is likely not to respond to that request and it hasn't been especially helpful in allowing citizens to leave the city. 6,000 people were supposed to be able to board buses yesterday, but only a few thousand were able to actually get out. Elsewhere, in the Battle of the Donbass, Ukrainian forces have managed to hold on to key positions, although Russia has made serious efforts to dislodge them, claiming that it hit 1,001 Ukrainian military targets with missiles and artillery last night. However, as per usual with these Russian attacks, it appears that their definition of military target is a bit loose, with civilians reporting being attacked as well in areas such as Kharkiv. And with the prospect of needing to fight mass Russian tanks and artillery, with little more than infantry, although extremely well-equipped infantry, it's no surprise that we've seen Zelensky continuing his efforts to secure heavy weapons, and that has seemingly paid off. First off, Ukraine has managed to field 20 more fighter planes after getting spare parts and repairing grounded aircraft. But also beyond that, Western nations have continued to ramp up their shipment of weapons. And according to multiple reports, U.S. defense officials claim that Ukraine has been given whole helicopters, including helicopters from the U.S. And that's part of an $800 million aid deal Biden approved last week that also includes sending artillery and plenty of ammunition for it. Britain has also approved a $130 million arms package for Ukraine, 
Ukraine. That deal including anti-tank missiles, air defense systems, and non-lethal equipment. Norway also approving sending more weapons. And even Israel, which has been reluctant to take part in arming Ukraine in any way, has made a policy shift, sending body armor and helmets to Ukraine. However, all of that doesn't mean that Ukraine still doesn't need more. Howitzers and anti-missile defense systems are great and all, but in reality it also desperately needs tanks and jets. Neither of which it seems to have received yet, despite some nations signaling their willingness to send them. Though with that, Russia has not taken that prospect lightly, and in response reportedly tested its newer nuclear missile yesterday, with Putin claiming it would, quote, give thought to those who are trying to threaten Russia. But the U.S., at least publicly, doesn't appear to be worried with Pentagon spokesperson John Kirby saying, such testing is routine and it was not a surprise. It was not deemed to be a threat to the United States or its allies. And ultimately, where I want to end on this topic is what's being done for the five million or so Ukrainians that have fled the country. Right, many nations have opened up their borders for them, though the U.S. has lagged behind a bit. But actually, that changed today with the Biden administration announcing a plan to make good on its promise to take in at least 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. With Homeland Security Secretary Mayorka saying in a statement, we are proud to deliver on President Biden's commitment to welcome 100,000 Ukrainians and others fleeing Russian aggression to the United States. And adding, DHS will continue to provide relief to the Ukrainian people while supporting our European allies who have shouldered so much as the result of Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. And apparently, starting Monday, U.S.-based individuals and entities can apply online to sponsor Ukrainian citizens, with sponsors needing to pass background checks and prove they can financially support the refugees under their care. And to qualify, Ukrainians must have been residents of Ukraine as of February 11th, so this won't apply to many Ukrainians who are already living abroad before the war, with the Ukrainians also needing to have required vaccinations and they have to clear their own background checks to arrive. And once approved, they'll be allowed to travel to the U.S. and apply for work authorization, with authorities mostly expecting organizations such as Welcome.us, a refugee aid organization led by former President Barack Obama and George W. Bush, to provide aid. They're also planning for most refugees to have families in the U.S., as one million U.S.-born citizens are of Ukrainian descent, with a further 355,000 Ukrainian immigrants. However, the, the plan has some hiccups. First is that these people are arriving on parole, though Biden officials say they plan to expand it to allow for permanent pathways for vulnerable groups such as women and children. It also requires refugees to arrive from Europe, with the plan explicitly stating that those arriving at ports of entry and the border without authorization will be denied starting Monday, which is very notable for the roughly 15,000 Ukrainians sitting on the U.S.-Mexico border hoping for a way to get in, with them seemingly screwed as of right now. But ultimately, where I'll end this is if you want to help Ukrainians trying to come to the U.S., I'll leave some resources for you down below. But ultimately, that is where that story and today's show ends. And as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you next time.